after Beast Wars uh, was over and uh, um, I'd had a really good experience as a director on Beast Wars. One of the things that happened on Beast Wars was when I went up there to direct, um, it was not something that I had done before, and um, but I had been a storyboard artist before. So in my belief that I needed to know exactly what I was doing because I needed to be able to get a show done even though I'd never done one before, I storyboarded the entire episode myself. Uh, that was not something that Mainframe had ever really done before. Occasionally they would do partial storyboards. Most often they would simply wing it. Um, uh, they would, they would, the director would try to explain to an animator kind of what he had in mind and the animator would do it and then they would tweak it around a little bit. No one had ever tried to do a storyboard and an animatic before, literally to shoot the storyboard so that it was 22 minutes and eight frames long, which was how long we were doing these things, and uh, and then just do those individual scenes. And to be honest, the, the animators were a little resistant at first. They had never really dealt with it before. They quickly came around. Um, and uh, what was unusual about it was we started in Act 3. I mean, uh, we actually started with the very hardest scenes because I knew they were going to take the longest to do. And if we couldn't do those scenes, there was no point in doing the show. I mean, we had to be able to do these scenes. Uh, the, you know, Dinobot getting just blasted, and, and Walter built three different versions of... Walter was my uh, senior animator, uh, and uh, he built three different versions of uh, Dinobot in various stages of destruction. And, uh, and you know, we, we mapped out which ones needed to be used in which scenes. And, uh, and actually, I threw um, uh, the management into a bit of a panic, because we seemed like we were really, really behind compared to the other crews. The other crews would start off with a lot of easy stuff, you know. Uh, they would start from the beginning and work their way to the end, and they would take a lot of the dialogue stuff. Um, and uh, But what they didn't realize was that my crew was working on the very hardest stuff from the beginning. Towards the end, we were breezing through it, and they were starting to try and give us... I, I almost wanted to resist, you know. It's like, no, we can do it. And, uh, and we literally finished a day early, which no one had ever done before. And the crew was so exhausted, they said, don't tell anybody, they'll make us go work on other crews. So, so we just... Everybody had to come in, and they all had to sit at their desks, but nobody had to do anything, and everybody just, like, quietly, you know, uh, celebrated uh, uh, not having to work for a solid day. Um, uh, and, you know, it was... a uh, it was great, and uh, ever since, uh, Mainframe has used storyboards uh, uh, constantly, and you know they they saw that there was a, a good reason for it, um, and uh, and I took that experience and uh, moved over to supervising producer on a series called Dan Dare, which was done by uh, Foundation amongst other people, uh, and uh, used my experience there to, I, I was not the director, but basically I was the person on site to make decisions. And, and just with that show, we just had to get it done. I mean, uh, it had had financial difficulties amongst other things, and uh, it was very important no matter what, you didn't go back, you didn't have to, you know, retakes, you just, we couldn't do it. You know, it's like we had to meet the budget, we had to meet the time. And through that, um, uh, again, I was doing all the storyboard changes because nobody had, nobody had budgeted for a storyboard supervisor. So basically I had to do that. Uh, I, I, had a lot, I wore a lot of hats on that episode, uh, on that series. But what that taught me was just I knew how to get things done. And... Uh, so when my kids actually started messing around with video cameras and, and starting trying to make their own movies, and, and as kids always will, get a little overwhelmed, they get lost. Um, but I had already been working with editing equipment. I, I already knew how to get stuff done. I said, you know, if we're going to do this, let's do one. And, uh, and they were, sure, why not? Uh, I had a son who was working as a, an older son who was working as a video editor who had showed me some neat things that could be done with uh, video compositing. I had a, a younger son who was our, at that time a brown belt in karate. Um, uh, he had some friends who were willing to do fight scenes and, uh, and we just knew that we could probably get away with shooting some cool stuff with toys. And the end result was we wrote a little short 15 minute film called Agent 12. And uh, over the course of about six months, we spent $900 and, uh, and we made a little short film that uh, 
is given how cheap we did it, and we did the whole thing in my garage, um, it's pretty damn cool. And, uh, and the kids had a tremendous time. We all had a great time. And we got it done, which I think uh, is what surprised people more than anything else. My uh, friend Frank Becker did the music. He did a great job. We, uh, Angus and I did the sound effects all by ourselves. Uh, um, uh, we, I mean, we, were, we had him dancing on metal chairs to do the footsteps and, and, uh, and uh, smacking the chairs to do the hits and the kicks. And, and, uh, but the important thing was that by doing a storyboard, by pinning up the discs, by keeping track of everything we needed to do, uh, we did manage to do a a, a 12 year old super spy movie with rocket powered jet cars and uh, and uh, and giant robots and everything else uh, and we got it done and uh, uh, and because of that uh, we're doing another one uh, and it's actually it's gotten us a lot of attention and it got us enough attention so that when the new um, their, the new Thunderbird series came out, uh, which involved miniatures, basically toys and blowing stuff up and everything that we were already doing, the producer saw Agent 12 and I got hired. So, <laughs> so Agent 12 actually got me a job. Uh, and, uh, uh, and for that I am you know, grateful in and of itself. Uh, but uh, uh, just because obviously I knew what I was doing when it came to working with miniatures for dealing with uh, the kind of things that they needed to deal with. Because when we're, we're, we're just starting the Thunderbird series and that's, you know, it's, it's not CG. It's all being done with miniatures and puppets and everything else. But uh, because of the Agent 12 experience, I know very much of what they're going through. And, uh, and uh, I believe that's helping me in the, in the writing of that. As far as a place in my career, Beast Wars has just got a big warm spot in my heart. I, uh, uh, I don't think I've ever had so much fun working on a series. The amount of emotion that that, sh that Beast Wars uh, sponsored uh, still stuns me. I mean, I still, when I meet fans and they, and they just tell me how much it meant to them, um, it, 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 it just, uh, I almost, I almost want to cry. I almost want to apologize. I almost want to say. I'm sorry, a lot of the time I was just like jamming something out, you know, uh, uh, I, if I'd known it was going to like affect you this much, I would have worked harder at it. Uh, uh, but still, I think that for sort of free swinging, uh, swashbuckling spirit that uh, Beast Wars had made it, gave it part of its charm. Uh, and I think if we'd worked hard at it, harder at it, it would have gotten overworked. Uh, I think it worked well, just the way it was.